Greetings from Mexico. Lafitte Pinkai here to take you through the week that was on HRTV. Rachel Alexandra returned to her Horse of the Year form by taking the Grade 2 Fleur de Lis. As Jessica is back, drops to third, but it's Rachel Alexandra at the top of the lane, and she leads now by a length and a half. Distinctive Dixie is in second. Jessica is back in third, but Rachel Alexandra is sticking her tongue out at her rivals, and she's coming now, clear by six lengths, a sixteenth from the, the wire. She's right, royal and regal. The queen of Churchill Downs, Rachel, is back. It was a great victory for Rachel Alexandra. Congratulations, Steve. Oh, thank you. Just glad to have her winning again. You know, it was tremendous to see her run so well today. There was a, a lot of talk. You hear the word confidence bandered around uh, from people. And was that in the equation when you made the selection for the Florida Lee, or were there other reasons that that was the perfect race for her today? We just hope this is a step in the right direction, you know, to fulfill what we, she's back in training for this year and hopefully it'll culminate uh, towards the end of the year. As you watched the race unfold, did it go as you expected and were you pleased to see where she was when she did engage uh, Jessica's back? I, I think, you know, the concerns of the day is how hot it is, how humid it is, how much that'll take out of her. thought she was very good pre-race. She was away from the gates, relaxed. You know, maybe step, step and a half when the filly crossed over there where she uh, stutter stepped a bit, but she looked uh, very very good after that, um, you know, 12, 12 and change most of the race, so finished up nicely, seemed to gallop out well, you know, uh, very happy to see her win as we had already mentioned and the concern will be how much the heat took out of her. Steven, watching her in the paddock in particular and the post parade uh, and out in the racetrack, she, she seems to be a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more laid back. Uh, last year she appeared to be kind of always on go, a, a very intense type of athlete. Do you see any change in her from, from her three year old year to now? Well, I think the circumstances, you know, last year um, she was in the barn 10 days and we were running her in the Preakness. You know, the, the amount of pressure that was on her uh, from the time she stepped into the barn was uh, something that I don't think anybody has had to, to face. So when we just tried to maintain from there, you know, she's been given a break and she's come back and I think that she's very healthy and uh, I was glad to see her win again today. And, I, and like we mentioned, we just hope that it's a step towards bigger things. Now, I already know that I'm probably not going to get an answer, but I have to ask the question anyway, which I'm sure you've been asked about a hundred times already today. Uh, any ideas on, on what might be next for her? Well, I think we need to see how the heat affects her, you know, how tired she is over the next few days. It's very humid today, and uh, I think we'll just uh, pay attention to her hydration and how she goes back to the track, but it would be very premature to uh, suggest any race next. She never really left, but it's sure nice to see her back, especially in the winter circle. Jockey Mike Smith joined race day to talk about how he prepares for Zenyatta's races. You know, we got a job to do, and, and uh, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting to where the point where we're going for 17. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I mean, it's unbelievable. And with, with that, with all that, it becomes a lot of responsibility on, on, on my part, too. And I need to be as fit and as focused as possible, and I'm doing my best to do that. Do you start planning your week going into Zenyatta's races ahead of time? Do you sort of mark out what you need to do or, or how you need to be ready on certain terms? You know, I kind of do. I, 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 Ten days out, I mean, I start, you know, with her, you know, just, just really, really training. Um, just, it's just my own thing I do, and it, it works for me so far, so I'm going to keep it up. And matter of fact, I'm leaving here and doing my hike up the mountain and get ready. Although it doesn't seem like I have to ride her too hard, I, just in case I want to be ready, you know. <laughs> Well, here's a look at the horses that you, you could be taking on. St. Trinian's and, and Zardana are the two that, that stand off the page. Does this, uh, w what does this mean when you look at it? Do you worry about the other names at all? Yeah, I mean, it, you really, I, honestly, you really do. Uh, you worry about all of them. I mean, you know, in any, you know, horse racing, any given day, I mean, you know, horses can jump up and just, you know, you know, run an incredible race, and maybe you're not at your best that day or whatever, and you certainly have to get the trip. She's always coming from last. Uh, but she's really happy right now. She's training well, you know, given the opportunity that she gets to run her race, and, and she does, um, I think you see something pretty cool again. I mean, she's really <laughs> happy right now. Mike, how has she changed through the course of her 17 victories? 
she's just really she seems to get better all the time you know as, as a she just any she's so professional i mean uh, she just does whatever you ask her to do um, and doesn't do much more than that i mean she always just does what you ask her to do and you know lately her uh, she's been breezing uh, a little slower than, than normal but but just really nice happy just cruising i mean just getting by the company really easy and just galloping out and she's galloping out just tremendous i mean so everything's still there i mean if anything else i, I if, anything, if you had to say anything I, i'd hate to say it, but i think she's just getting better and better it's just amazing Trainer Al Stahl Jr. called into race day to discuss Blame's chances with an outside post. What about this outside post and trying to, to you know, get position from post 11 in tomorrow's uh, Stephen Foster? Right. Well, it was disappointing that, but there's nothing you can do about it. And Garrett's ridden the horse twice, so um, I just let him play it and see what happens, play it off the break, and... And we'll see what battle plan does. It looks like a lone speed, unfortunately for us. But, uh, you know, he might have a little more speed than, uh, you know, we've kind of taught him to lay off the pace and finish up. And he's an athletic horse, and he, he does kind of get in the rider's hands. So maybe a little niggle here and there. He might be a little closer than one would think. Looks like he's learned his lessons well. I mean, putting three consecutive wins together, doing just that. And he sat behind some pretty modest fractions last time out in the William D. Schaefer early, 24, 48, and 1. And then going on to take it by a length and a half. Take us through the stretch run here. What were your thoughts as we're about mid-stretch? Well, I, he looked like he was all dressed up, ready to go somewhere, and I was just hoping for an opening. And it turned out one horse kind of drifted in, the other horse drifted out, and there was a little bit more room than you'd normally expect, and he went right through it. And, and Guy was very excited after the race. He said that was a perfect scenario for him. He said he just had to make him gut himself for just about an eighth of a mile, and the track's a little deeper in Timoco than it used to be in, in the, uh, in the uh, earlier years of the Preakness week. And uh, we thought he just got enough out of that race to really set him up for this race. The feature at Churchill this week was the grade one Stephen Foster handicap. Macho again is out in front, down the outside, Arson Squad, it's too late today. Arson Squad is out in front by two lengths now. Trunk shoes on the outside, Arson Squad wins the Ali Sheba. Duke of Mischief got the jump on the field, and Duke of Mischief will win the Oakland handicap by three and a half. It's Blame and Garrett Gomez. Blame pulling away to win the William Donald Shaver. General Quarters the far side and neck in front, racing up towards the line. General Quarters has won the Woodford Reserve. Battle plan down towards the final three sixteens. Battle plan has gone clear now by three lengths. In second is General Quarters. Here now chasing from out of the pack is Blame. It is Battle Plan out in front. Blame though is flashing home on the outside. Here comes Blame. Blame is going to take the grade one, Stephen Foster. At Belmont, Life at 10 pulled off an upset in the grade one Ogden Phipps handicap. Life at 10 and Unrivaled Bell. Funny Moon trying to close in on them. At the top of the stretch, Unrivaled Bell cannot get to Life at 10. Life at 10 has turned back Unrivaled Bell, but can she turn back Funny Moon? There's a 16th to go, and it's Life at 10 clear by three. Unrivaled Bell and Funny Moon on the outside. They're coming down to the finish, and Life at 10 has won the Ogden Phipps in front running style. Rail Trip's owner, Samantha Siegel, spoke with Race Day about his upcoming 2010 campaign. What are your expectations of Rail Trip here second off the layoff? Well, the horse looks phenomenal. He's training great. He's stronger and, uh, than last year. He knows what it's all about. Um, I think uh, Raphael suits him to a T. He gets him to relax well, and, you know, he'd never been on him before. He rode him in the Mervyn Leroy, and I think even he was surprised at how much horse he had. Um, I expect, you know, I expect him to win. I hate being 2-5. to five. Our record when we're a big favorite stinks. Um, there's so, you know, you can't count on any, you know, lots of things go wrong when you're a price like that. Everybody is out riding your horse as well as their horse, but... 
you know, hopefully things will go right and he can win and save a lot left in the tank for the Gold Cup. Well, there's plenty of racing, as you mentioned, here in Southern California. The Gold Cup, then you got the Pacific Classic. But uh, with the Breeders' Cup being at Churchill Downs this year, is there any thought of maybe, you know, this now is the time to try rail trip on a dirt surface, or is that something that, that we'll not see for quite some time or maybe never with rail trip? Well, hopefully we're going to get there for the Breeders' Cup. Um, and we're trying to take things, you know, one step at a time and not get too far ahead of ourselves. But um, I don't see any problem with him handling it. He's very light on his feet, and his action is beautiful, and he was broken on a dirt track. So I don't see it as being a problem. Um, where we go after the Gold Cup, we haven't really sat down and discussed that yet. But um, we'll see. May we get there and have it to deal with. Top of the stretch, a new leader is named Rail Trip, and he takes charge. Here is Rail Trip, now suddenly two in front. Sangaree, no more for one track. Mine slews tis now, and Rail Trip to the final 16th is straight and strong, and he's opening up a five length lead. Sangaree is second, slews tis now third. Here's a trip to the Gold Cup. Rail Trip, yes. Big drama made his return to the races after a nine-month layoff for trainer David Fox. What has he been doing uh, since, you know, since the King's Bishop and his workouts? They've obviously been very quick. Have you been pleased with the way that he's come back now at the age of four? Very. Real pleased with him. He worked uh, out of the gate one time. Uh, really nice breeze. And he's worked on the pole good. He's done everything right. David, why is it so important to give him a lot of time between his races? Um, you mean the nine months? Yeah, I mean, we saw nine months since then, but you had spaced out quite a few of his races. I, I space all of You know, I mean, if you look at Duke and Mischief, I do the same with him. You know, I think these these better horses that try really hard when they run need more time. As you bring him back now going three quarters, and obviously the summit of speed, we're, we're roughly a month away, David. Is he now being turned into a sprinter? Is that going to be the main focus here at the age of four? That's our focus right now, yeah, unless he shows something different. And uh, you mentioned the nine months. Was there something specific about nine months that he was away? No, it wasn't pregnant or anything. He just needs time off. <laughs> it's big drama going to work down to the final furlong. Big drama off this long layoff, but he's gotten a lead now in mid stretch, and he's opened it out to about three, three and a half lengths. Rusty Charlie all out in second as Sinceros closing on him, but big drama's back to the winner's circle. He wins the Ponch handicap. At Churchill, Downs After Dark Friday Night Racing kicked off with a healthy dose of disco fever. Churchill for horse racing's version of uh, Austin Powers and Agent Kensington. Guys. <laughs> Thanks so much, Lafitte. There was a lot of talk about me showing up without any shoes here at Churchill Downs. And not only do we have the shoes, but we have disco night. It's Downs After Dark and we're getting ready for the opener. And we hear in the background a fitting song, you are the dancing queen, Aaron. Wow, <laughs> well, thanks so much for the plug as the horses reach the starting gate. Success, success has now taken the lead over Heavenly Chorus, Moyers Pond to the outside. Holly's pal tries to kick back, but it's Calvin Burrell and success, success, who wins? Ready for race number two, and Jill, let's not forget, we're having a lot of fun out here, but there is racing going on, and we also have a better no bet contest. Oh, better no bet. This was so popular when we did this before at night racing. Basically what we do, everybody can sign up when they come into the racetrack, and then we'll draw names, two names, for races four and five, and then races eight and nine. They come into the paddock, and they get the choice. Take $100 or bet $1,000 to win. Bet or no bet starts with race number four here on Downs After Dark card at Churchill Downs, and this is a really difficult race to handicap. Yes, it's very hard. Most of them haven't run, and short field of uh, good horses, but uh, I'll have to take a, take a shot at it. Nakatani clear by length and a half. In second, giving chase is Voyles. They're going clear. Sparkling Spirit staying on to take third. Dance with Santana is in fourth, but it is Rasmataz who is out in front, and Rasmataz is going to give trainer Todd Pletcher his 100th career winner here at Churchill Downs. Rasmataz wins, Voyles in second. 
year two, Downs After Dark, right here on HRTV. Hi, everybody. Good evening to all of our friends on the east and west. I'm Peter Lurie, and it is a big, big night. We're going to check in again with Kate Bradar and Eric Vercruci. But right now, I want to introduce my partner, Bubbles Cadman, for the evening of Disco Night. Hola tonight, Bubbles. Hello, Peter. <laughs> How are you this fine evening? I wish I would have known. I would have dressed appropriately. Disco Night. Come on, <laughs> Pete. I was asleep. Well, how is Jedi Code doing? He's doing fine. He's doing good. I'm very pleased with him. Rail draw concern you at all? Yeah, because he doesn't break sharp. You know, he never gets out of the gates fast. You know, so but I've got the guy, the right guy for it. Yeah, I think Calvin can find the rail some way, somehow. Describe your relationship with Calvin Burrell. I know he rides a lot of horses for you. Well, Calvin's just an alderman horseman. You know, that's the whole key. You know, that's why we used him for a long time. He's a horseman. You know, he thinks of the horse first. He understands the horse. Well, we look at Jedi Code at two to one on the morning line right now on the tote board at even money. A little more pressure when you're favored going into the starting gate? No, it's out of my hands now. I've done a, I've done a perfect job. It's up to Calvin. They're well inside the final furlong now. It's Calvin Burrell and Jedi Code. And the force today is with Jedi Code, who wins for the second time. Jedi Code in front. Darren, talk a little bit about the crowd and the atmosphere tonight. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Um, you know, based on our reports, um, looking at the traffic flow coming in and out of the racetrack, looking at the crowd from atop, it looks just like it did a year ago. As you know, we averaged about 30,000 fans. The atmosphere is great. You got the disco music. And all of it, you know, it's really great is that all of this entertainment is surrounded by live horse racing as, as the, the product. Grunewald comes on, so too Solapino inside the final furlong now. Prove yourself has got the lead. Here on the outside is Grunewald. Grunewald has now claimed prove yourself and on the run to the line, Grunewald wins the first turf race under lights at Churchill Downs. There was a little history in the making, the first grass race under the lights here at Churchill Downs and it's won by Robbie Alvarado. Robbie, congratulations. And, and what's it like out there? Any difference from riding in the daytime versus the nighttime? No, I think I'm the wrong one to ask that because I grew up riding in, in night racing in the Vans and Downs in Louisiana, so I think it's pretty fun out here. Uh, the overwhelming crowd is, is is special. I think Kentucky Racing needed this uh, for a couple reasons. Now all we need to do is uh, educate these people around a bit. Inside the final furlong, public speaker will have one last go on the outside. Tis Deja Vu is out in front. Tis Deja Vu wins for the fourth time on the Matt Wynn Turf Course. I think this was a popular night for the race fans as well. Uh, no question, and they're still here partying until late in the night, and let's do it. Ready? You're doing the YMCA on me? I think right. that's what they're playing in the background. For Kate and Burn, myself, Aaron Vercruci, all of us here at HR TV that were on site at Churchill Downs. Appreciate you sticking with us throughout the evening. We're going to send you back to Los Angeles after this commercial break. Inside information looks into the life of Secretariat's jockey, Ron Turcott. He crossed the border for America, where both the money and the horses were an improvement. But the trip south brought him together with a fellow French Canadian, a trainer and former jockey who trusted both Ron's hands and mind. Bill Shoemaker had Charlie Whittingham, Eddie Arcaro had the Jones Boys, and Ron Turcott had Lucian Lauren. I started writing for Lucian Lauren uh, in the uh, fall of 1963 when I was writing in Pimlico. And one thing I've got to say about Lucian Lauren, he never once gave me orders. He always told me, write in the way the race come up. Use your best ju judgment. Less than a decade later, Lauren became the head trainer for the Meadow Stable. The stable was in a period of transition, with Penny Tweedy taking over the management for her ill father, Christopher Chenery. It was this unlikely trio of two French Canadians and a housewife from Colorado, which became an unstoppable force and changed the history of the sport of kings. It began with a plain bay colt named Riva Ridge. I always thought that Ron was a solid top class rider, but it wasn't until Reva Ridge came along that you saw what kind of a really superior race rider that Ron Turcott was. First time I rode Reva Ridge, and you ran three quarters of a mile in 110, 
When I got off, I told Lucian Lauren that he was probably the best horse I ever rode. And he says, Ronnie says, you know what you just said? I says, yeah. I had ridden Norton Dancer. I had ridden Tom Rolfe. I said, believe me, I says, the impression he gave me today, he's probably the best two-year-old I ever rode. As HRTV prepares for Royal Ascot, Fanny Salmon caught up with two-time Breeders' Cup champion, Gold Decova. This is it. We're about to enter the stables in Longchamp and see how Gold Decova has been doing since we last saw her. Can you tell us what you did this winter? She stayed with us for three months. She's a very dominant mare, and uh, when she's in the paddock, uh, you don't, you can't just go and walk in the paddock. You know, she she's looking at you, checking what you're doing, and uh, but she, she has always been very nice, you know. But so that was uh, interesting. Freddie, how has she changed since last year? I think at the same, she's better this year than she was at the same time last year. That's all I can say. And she is going to go back for the first time since the British government. Eighth Group 1 win for Goldikova. <laughs> Two more and they will equal Mies' record of 10 Group 1 wins. Hello, Olive. Everybody is watching Goldikova cooling down. She broke the track record too today. She did. She did it well. Huh? She's still, still the same. She wants to run. So what now? What now? The Queen Anne, and then afterwards same program, and uh, of course Churchill Downs. Huh? We hope so. <laughs> Royal Ascot's Nick Smith previews what could be a strong American presence during the week-long meet. It's fantastic to have uh, you know, one horse of Wesley's back, but also obviously Kenny McPeak uh, here with Noble's Promise and uh, and Carlo Callahan, who's really taken the place by storm already. <laughs> he was the star of the show at the press conference yesterday, that's for sure. <laughs> Will the U.S. horses get more uh, attention this year, do you think, because of what happened last year, Nick? Oh, no question about that at all, um, especially the two-year-olds. I think people are fascinated to, to see how good Wesley's one that he sent over is and, and perhaps how good Kenny's Kenny's are, and whether there's a, a pattern emerging that uh, American two-year-olds are just are just that bit quicker at this at this stage of the year. But you know, time will tell. But you know, Noble's promise is is, is clearly the key horse because he's uh, running outside the sprints uh, and the two-year-old races in, in one of the one of the most important uh, races in the whole of Europe, the St James's Palace Stakes, uh, in the championship race for three-year-old milers. Um, and if he can put up a show there, and you know, who knows, maybe even win. Uh, that's really going to rock the racing world over here, that's for certain. Moving on to Kinsale King, uh, coming off of a win at, uh, at Maidan, and, and you were there, Nick, to witness this this victory for the U.S. Uh, in not era, excuse me, in in, um, in Dubai, and that's something that they, they typically have done, we've typically done, gone over there and dominated that sprint race. How do you think he'll fare moving over to, to Ascot, and how much different will it be from what he's uh, done internationally so far? Well, I think if he'd been coming on the back of a conventional win in the Golden Shaheen on the old dirt track, then he might say, well, look, this is a big, big ask. But there's a lot of, um, there, there's clearly a lot of transference of, of form lines between all these um, uh, all-weather services, whether it be Pro Ride or Tapita. Um, and he he just looks like he's got a great chance. He's shipped fantastically well, settled in beautifully in Newmarket, as indeed have Kenny's horses. I mean, they've all travelled so well. Um, and he's, um, you know, you know, his form with Rocket Man is, is absolutely top class. I mean, no question about that. A lot of people crabbed it slightly after the race, suggesting maybe that Rocket Man wasn't given the most inspired ride. There's an argument that that's true, but um, you know, I, I, I've seen Kinsel King, and now the people uh, over here have seen Kinsel King win the Palace Verde Stakes, um, where he kind of does the same thing as he did against Rocket Man. He looks like he's there to be shot at, and he just finds more and more and more. So, I mean, all you can ask for in a sprinter is a bit of consistency, which is pretty rare in the sprinting ranks over here. Um, and, you know, it's, he pretty much, you know, he, he, could argue he sets the standard. So he's got to go well. That's all for this week on HRTV. Here's a look at what's coming up next week.
disco at the Downs, at Churchill Downs. And John, you're going to be coming up at the end. Were you a YMCA over at it? John Travolta. Aaron, Kate, and Jill, we saw you dancing. You look pretty good.